Good morning, all. Thank you for joining me this morning. We're gonna get right into it. We're gonna actually make it. We're actually making this morning a great breakfast. We have our eggs, bacon, shrimp, and the star grits. Okay, first, let's get rid of our watch. We don't cook in jewelry. Sanitize, of course. Get us going this morning. Hope all had a great night. Rest. Gonna be 20 seconds on that hand wash, always, always. That's gonna ensure as many germs as you can is off your hands. Let me get that in there nice and good. Good lather, a good rinse. From the rest down, let the water drain down. All those germs are going away. We're gonna leave the water running, go to our dry towel. Use that towel to turn off the water. Firm dry. Made a little mistake yesterday, but every day is better. We have our apron, and we're ready to get started. Let's put those eggs away until a little later. Keep it at temperature. Get our skillet going. <clears throat> Pardon me. We're gonna have some bacon here. That's gonna actually enhance the flavor of that shrimp. Get rid of that. Go ahead and actually. Okay, like that. I'm gonna get out my steak knife, my chef knife, excuse me. Always in the sleeve if necessary, possible. Clean, remember, we want that perfect, proper knife handling. Index finger, thumb on the other side, and around. We're gonna actually just roughly chop these using the tip of the knife. Let the knife work. And we're just tearing that bacon up to get nice, good, edible pieces. Again, we're working comfortably with the knife. We're moving the fingers back and letting the knife work. Same motion. Create space for yourself. Safety first. And that's a good chop on that. And because bacon makes its own, what you would call grease, it sweats. And it has a great flavor. We're gonna put that right in there. And as you actually start to hear that sizzle, we know that's cooking up. Get a rinse on our knife in case we need it later. It's air drying and it'll be ready for us. I did a quick light wash, firm dry. I have a secondary towel over here to my side. And because bacon and seafood has to be cooked to the same proper temperatures at 145, we can just dump that right onto that same surface because that protein is all going to be cooked the same. Let's pull back a few of those. We might stir those up for a little bit. That's going to be a good treat later. Okay, we're going to put that protein away. Second to the bottom chunk. And while that bacon is rendering in the pan, we're gonna actually add a little bit of a basic stick of butter. And get my helping agent. Trusty paring knife. It's a nice little edible, it's a nice knife. It's gonna go about a quarter, a little bit more than a quarter, and that's gonna render good. And rendering just means blending together. Okay, all right, let's be peely shrimp. Get that all getting up good. It's gonna be great. Right after we de-peel these, we're gonna do a nice low cut, I mean low cover of salt and pepper. A little bit of Cajun seasoning. I like my food a little spicy. And again, you can choose your own spices. I'm gonna turn that down so that's going good. Give that a nice shake. And that's going good. This is going to be great. And to be honest, shrimp is, as you can see in these few tutorials, very multi-purposeful. It's a very, very delectable. It's delicious. It's subtle. And it can be a big bang of a dish, too. 
And right, we want those, we want all of our flavors to make sure that they dance together. So we all can dance. That's all we gotta do. Get those flavors in there nice. All right, I guess let's just go with that. Because those grits are going, I got my four quart Dutch oven pan. So I'll go ahead and apply that there. And I'm gonna go right in with water. These cups are 24 ounce cups. And we all know that eight ounces make one cup. And that's gonna be my water enough for my two servings of grits. I'm gonna put a little extra because water always decreases as it boils down. And that's about 1.75 quarts of that four quart Dutch oven. And that's good. That's beautiful there. We're gonna go ahead and put a little larger. One table, one tablespoon of butter. And we're doing good. Let's get another help mate. That bacon looks good. That bacon looks really good. Let's go turn on the camera. Let's see those aromas. See that smoke coming up? The waving. And that smells good. You always want to use your hood. It's always good. You don't smoke up the house. And it allows you, it allows the fumes to escape safely from out of your home. Again, we want to keep our family safe while we're on our adventure in our kitchen. Getting one-on-one. -on -one. All right, that's good. That's looking good. Now, let's get that rinse on this. Get a bowl. Right. Got shrimp in there. And a lot of times, because we do easy cleanup, those 10 to 20 second cleanups throughout our time, a lot of times you can reuse the same bowls. As long as you do a proper clean. And see, as importantly, it's especially important to especially rinse your shrimp because they do like to party at the bottom of the seat. You want to make sure that all that stuff is clean, the deveining process is still done and accurate. And with that process, you'll be able to nail it every time and you get a good, crisp, fresh taste. Once you get all those flavors on there and it's all cooked up perfect, then you can enjoy it. Right back in there, we're gonna just leave that in the bowl. Go right into that seasoning you were talking about. That bacon looks good. And you don't want it to burn, you want it to just get cooked. Make sure all your little pieces are getting flipped as much as possible so that bacon has a good aftertaste. Okay. I'm gonna go right in with the seafood seasoning, a little bit. Good. Definitely pepper. A couple of shakes. Definitely salt. Just a little bit. Never over the food, just in case a mistake happens. A couple of shakes. So we're gonna just start to stir that around. That bacon is actually perfect. And I actually have a plate over here to my side that the bacon is actually going to drain on. And you want it to drain. You want that to drain. And you just a light lift of the pot, pan, excuse me, and spoon that out. And we're going to go right in with the shrimp. because that's gonna help that crisp up just nice as well. Okay, we're actually gonna go to our trusty vegetable oil. And that's just from a, my local Publix, pardon me. Yeah, let's do it a little bit more safer. Cause it's always safety first, right? Get a nice little measuring cup here. And that's one third cup. 
And for this medium saucepan, that was perfect. That was perfect. You guys are doing great. Let's get rid of that. Discard of that. Put this in the keep safe. And we're good. Now with our shrimp, we're gonna actually get that a good toss and put this in the refrigerator. It's gonna soft lid on it. All right, check that. And we're gonna go right into a mix of flour, cornstarch, baking powder, light bread crumbs, And that's going to allow your shirt to actually turn out gorgeous. And we're going to work a little quick. That way, our oil never burns. Our water's starting to boil a little bit there. Let's turn the camera back around for you all to see clearly. And we're going to go in. And Chain measuring cup, and remember, you can always find these bowls. Honestly, I got this bowl from Dollar Tree. It came with the lid all together, and it actually came in a pack of two. So, I remember it has that increment on the side. That's one cup, two cups, and I have my one third cup measuring cup. Let's double check. Yep, it's a one third, and we're gonna go right into it. I'm gonna get all these good products in here. These, all these great ingredients. Now, let's start with the flour. The flour, that's what's gonna coat it. It's gonna actually bring everything together. So we're gonna get started with that. Got my quarter cup, three four, three third, one third, excuse me. And we're actually gonna because this is also dry and we're working with dry ingredients, we're gonna just scrape that across the top there like that. And the extra that goes in, that's good too. Grandma always taught me you need a little extra. A little extra love. I'm gonna go in with another cup here. Now I'm using the knife. You can't see on camera, but over all of the bag. And now we have even scoops. And that's going to be good with that. The flour is good. The flour. Wipe off my patty knife. Now when you're working with dry ingredients, you want to make sure everything that you use, all your helping agents, remain dry. So we have our towel here over to the side. And we're just going to give that a good dry. That way everything is level and what you measure comes out equally. Okay? We're gonna actually get a small scoop on the cornstarch. I'm gonna get another help me. A little smaller guy in there. There we go. And that's actually a quarter of a cup. I'm gonna go right back with it. A little light shake there. I'm gonna actually use the back of my spoon here to keep that even. And I'm keeping it right over the container. And that's gonna be good on that. A little light tap, and we're good. That's actually perfect. We use that just in case. We're gonna go even smaller for the baking soda. Now this is always overestimated. You never want to overestimate it because this help your this helps your levying levying agent. That's with an E, not level. And you just want one, two. And that's a half a ta ta tablespoon, excuse me. And we're gonna close up these products here. I see my oil is going, it's getting right. We're gonna actually remove that from the eye a little bit. Just turn that off. And that's actually gonna stay at temperature while we put these ingredients away. My water is boiling. For my grits, give you a small turn on the camera. So we're gonna go right in with that. This is also a dry ingredient, so we're gonna keep our same dishes, our same bowls. Uh, 
behind me. This cup is measured out the circumference and with the volume measure, liquid model measurement, I can fill this up halfway and that will be my two cups for my grits. And that's gonna serve both of us nicely. And I'm actually gonna turn my grit water down. Rinse off my helpmate. Let's set, let's set that down for safety. Make sure this is rinsed off nicely. Nice and fresh. Okay, I'm gonna make sure your hands stay dry. We're working over the stove. Oh, pardon me. And as you get your grits that you pre-measured, you just want to stir the water as you pour it in. And that's going to evade and prevent clumpy grits. Nobody wants clumpy grits. If grease pops, never freak out. Slowly remove it from that hot surface, and you can move it in front of you. Move anything else around it that could possibly burn away, and you're good. You want to get a good stir on your grits. Make sure that temperature is turned down. I'm get a small turn on the camera for you. This is how you want it to be seen. And you want to stir actually continuously for two to three minutes. Get a good stir on it. Nice little turn back for you. And you're just taking your time. Your spoon is actually firmly against the bottom. And I never raise it from the bottom. That prevents splashing. We all seen a few movies and we all have had it pop up on us and that's no fun. Oh, I hope this would happen. You get a little clump in there. You want to get that to the side there like this and you just want to push the mesh that out. And that's a good technique there. I'm actually going to readjust the camera for you. Let's move our oil back to the eye. With that same spoon, we're going to just fish out some of these bad pieces down here at the bottom of our oil. <clears throat> that's good there. Going to get a good little shake on that. And that's actually a great technique to uh, stir up dry ingredients. You're actually going to also get another helpmate, my fork. Because it's not solid like a spoon, I can get in there and get things mixed up well. Scrape it off on the side. You want to test your oil? Little pinch here. If it sizzles immediately, then we're ready to go. So one more agent that I need to add, and that's going to be our breadcrumbs. Now I waited to the last for the breadcrumbs for one simple reason because it's important to know exactly how much you're putting in so it doesn't become gooey. You don't want it to overdo the rest of your agents there. And that's one third cup. And I'm actually gonna just, you do half of this cup the second time and that's perfect. There. Put that away, we're done with that. Our grits are looking good. We're gonna get a good toss on this. Still using that same fork, just getting that in there, scraping the sides. You can see clearly, I'm actually working that in there on the bottom. And I'm still not raising it from the bottom surface of the bowl. That helps prevent splashing. Quick mix, we're done with that. Let's grab our protein immediately that we have in our fridge here. Place that there, right in with the shrimp. Good toss on that. And that shrimp looks good. And we just gonna we just wanna place it firmly in the pan. And that's cooking up good. So we turned off our eye, yes. And we wanted to make sure that our grease wasn't too hot. Well, because you can still hear it. Sure if you can hear it. We're gonna actually lid our grease. Gonna lid that. That prevents us from getting hurt. See how it's still starting to cook? I turned our eye back on. That's actually gonna cook right back to temperature. That oil is gonna reach the proper temperature for the shrimp to cook fairly through to vent, prevent foodborne illness. We're gonna rinse our bowl here. 
And I think I undercounted our shrimp. Not a problem. We have more. And remember that that, <clears throat> that process was not long. And that happens when we cook at home. That happens when we cook even professionally. Those who have had the experience and look forward to going into that industry. That happens. But we have time. We have time to rectify the situation. Get a couple more shrimp out there. Let's just use it all. Why not? Shrimp is good. Get a quick peel on that. Start that process there. And we're just throwing that to the side. Good shrimp, bad shrimp. I mean, good shrimp, bad parts. Shells are bad. I'm sure if you can hear that. I'm actually gonna go in with my fork on this side because my hands are a little wet still. But I hear that cooking up again. My shrimp is starting to cook. So I'm gonna go ahead and add his other little friends in there so they all can start going at the same time. And that's turning out great. Those are actually going great, going in great. And they're curly. Yes, once shrimp starts to curl, it is cooking. Does not necessarily always mean that they're done. You don't want a gooey shrimp. You want that little guy to be nice and succulent in your mouth. All right, while those cook, we're gonna actually de de peel some more. Get that same seasoning, flavor, and blend on these guys as well and girls. And. We're going to uh, enjoy these as well. And it's going to be great. If you're following along today and you have your grits going and everything's going as pace, my fire for my shrimp is turned down to about a medium, mild, high medium, some number of stoves. It might be between a seven and an eight. And you have that going. It sounds like David Ruffin singing. You're going to hear a faint pop, and that's your grits. That's letting me know that they're cooking. That's letting me know that the water could be evaporating faster than what I need it to be. So once I peel this last shrimp and put them into their bowl, let's discard this first. So they can be rinsed. I'm going to move them to the sink. We're going to check our grits, and that's going to go just like that. Dry our hands, no splashing. And we're gonna go right into it. Oh, that looks good. I'm gonna give it start to begin a small stir just along the edge. Always work along the edge to prevent splashing, of course. Those grits are turning out great. Everybody cooks grits differently. I've learned. A little bit of milk, and that's actually gonna help you. We'll go back to our measuring, measuring cup, excuse me. And because that's a liquid that we're measuring, it still needs to be somewhere fairly dry. Back at the third cup, and we're gonna actually incorporate that into our grits. And I'm gonna do one more, equivalent to a, a, cup, and a, a cup and a quarter, excuse me, a cup and a half, a cup and a third, excuse me. Put that away. And then I'm going to go right in after that with my butter. Get my other help made out, out of here. And I'm going right in. I go big. I like my grits very creamy, but cooked. Pardon me. And with that going in there, oh, let me get a turn on the camera for you all. Oh, that's looking good. That's what you want. That's what you want. That butter and that milk going in there, your grits are gonna come out. Oh, so just. Sometimes I get so excited about food, I lose my words. It's gonna be good, it's gonna be so delicious for you all. You hear that tapping? That's me actually breaking up one of those cups I showed you earlier. And that's okay. That's just letting me know that it's cooking. Once that clump is broken up and you stir it, all those grains and those grits are gonna actually continue to cook firmly. 
and evenly. Now, our shrimp is looking great. Seems as if we got all the clumps out of our grits. And that's good. Nobody wants a clumpy grit. And to actually keep that loose, I found that works for me. And everybody is different. And you can try, experiment. Experiment what goes on. And what works for you and your family, your taste buds, and your belly. For me, it's butter. Honestly. And I still go big, and that's going to be another teaspoon, tablespoon, excuse me. And I'm going to cover that back up and actually turn my fire down a little bit more. And let's focus on this shrimp. Oh, it's going good. It's getting good. You got to feel good when you cook. That way it comes out good and people enjoy it. That's what you want. And you see how this is turning out? Let me get a, let me get a turn on it for you. This is what you want, folks. This is, when I flip that shrimp over, look at that. That's what you want. And you watch your eye. See what part of the, yes. See what part of the eye is cooking and what part is not. You have to rotate your pan, yes. This is what you want. That crunch, that crisp. And that shrimp is going to be tucked in that crust so well that you're going to probably fall out of your chair when you bite into it. And then sitting on top of those creamy grits, it's going to be great. It's going to be great. You guys are doing great. This is great. Those shrimp look down. And you feel good. You, 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 you get the technique going and you just feel good. Okay, let's do a small cleanup. That shrimp on that side is going to cook about two to three minutes, roughly. By the time I count to about 45, my dishes will be done. Got a few measuring cups over here, helping agents. I'm going to actually prepare my next round of shrimp to go in. I know my husband's going to want extra. I'm going to want extra. If you're following along today and you follow the recipes outside of the seasonings that you chose, you're going to want extra. That shrimp is going to be so good. I'm telling you. I get excited. But in the kitchen, you got to stay disciplined. That way, safety first, okay? Let's get a good wipe up. Good clean up. Definitely. Always keep our surfaces clean. I can even wash these out. I have time. Remember, keep your hands moving in the kitchen and your mind stays focused. That's great. Those are clean and ready for me to use them again. Thank you. Now make sure that the surface is super clean in case anything else has to go on to it. And it does. Yes, 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 yes. We're going to actually keep our shrimp into the bowl. Keep our dredge. Dredge means to drag. So you want to get that. That's what we made earlier with the cornstarch and the baking powder and the baking soda and the flour. So we're going to keep that to the side. We're actually going to get that same seasoning on this shrimp. Get a nice little pepper coating. Always our salt. There's that helping agent back. Not over the food. Perfect. Same seasoning. So we have that same consistency. A little bit more. Remember your coloring technique. So you see how that looks. When you look at your food, it should be blended nicely. Nice. Like my husband says. You gotta have it all come together. Pardon me. Let's get that going for you. All right, my shrimp are actually on the last 15 to 20 seconds of having to come out of that pan to go into our keepsake. After that stirs up nicely like that. And if you're not able to do this just yet, that's fine. We're gonna get in there with our hands and we're gonna stir it up. That gets one-on-one -on -one with those shrimp. That gets one-on-one -on -one with what you're doing. 
being comfortable in your kitchen and your environment because it's your house. It's your kitchen. Your, 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 it's you. Love it. Own it. Get those pieces out there like that. So I know they're right ready to go in. And that way I know I have all my pieces out of it before I lid this bowl and store it for next time. I have a rinse on my hand so I can use that again. After I lid this bowl, I'm going to keep moving to my refrigerator, store that so that doesn't lose its value. And we're going right into skipping this shrimp out of this pan because we don't want them overdone. Not even at all. And that's going to actually go on the same keep safe that we had our bacon on. And we're in there like swimwear, folks. And we're going right into it. Look at that. Look at that. That's gorgeous. That's what you want, folks. You want those shrimp to almost jump out of the pan ready for your plate. Firm, tart. That's gorgeous right there. Now, because these cooked up so well, and you all did such a great job, guess what? We're gonna actually gonna be able to sift, put this away in the keep safe. We're gonna actually sift our oil before we apply the next round of shrimp, and that's okay, because we have all these great grits over here cooking as well. I'm gonna actually add a little bit of water to them. These tall cups here, you can find at any local store, about this much water here, and you'll be, that's enough for your grits there. And you just wanna slowly add that. And that'll slow down that pop. That pop just lets you know that they're cooking. And let you know that they're getting ready for you. Okay. Now, depending on your countertops, I like to do this right here because, again, it's always safety first with me. Yeah, I want you to have fun. I want you to get to know a new territory in your home, but I want you all to still be safe. I want to be safe. Okay? And it's because this is how this is finished. I can go right here. This is stone top. Laminate. Make sure it's not laminate because it will burn. It can burn. And we're just going to fish this out as much as we can. We don't want to do it all. We want to sift it because actually this is carrying a lot of flavors. And the reason why we sift it and not just start fresh is because we want those flavors, folks. That great, that great blend that you put together with your seasonings of your choice. You want that to stay in there. Just not too much so it doesn't burn. This only takes a few minutes. And guess what? We're right back at it. Now, the oil has diminished a little bit, but because that's been sifted, we're just gonna add a little bit of more of that good vegetable oil. Go back to our measuring cup, liquid on liquid, roughly dry, and we're going right back into it, folks. This is gonna be great. Oh yeah. Hear that? It's because your pan was ready. It has the proper temperature, still between seven and eight. Turn it down more. If you see that it's starting to burn, or those bubbles at the bottom are turning black. That's not good. And it's not a run. I can't do it. You can do it. Everybody can do it. Just sift it out. All right. Go ahead and discard that. Never try to get your oils. Your sifted, your sifted materials down your drain. It's not always good. Okay, well that works. That's actually going to warm up quite rapidly. And that shrimp can stay there. We're just going to give it a small cover. Okay? Now from here, we're just going to move some of these utensils out of the way. We're done with them for now. Only for now. We'll come back to you later. I'm actually, I love protein. Protein is great. Protein is actually helps you burn more 
if you're trying to put on or lose so it's great to be able to have that as much as you can in your diet as long with a balanced vegetable so we're going to move right into the second protein i know you remember this bowl yes this is that um little sidebar those who tuned in a little later last night we actually finished that marinade for tonight's dinner and that's what's also in this bowl but i have a little secret in here that i wanted to hide for you guys today all secrets aren't bad what is that what is that that is a piece of beautifully marinated steak it's thin thinly thinly pound out and these are just basic roundhouse steaks. And that's gonna go good with today's breakfast. I always like to rinse off the tops of my proteins and then just relit them, just in case. I'm gonna replace that back into our fridge. I'm gonna get a little rough cut on this. Still, same proper technique. Now, you may notice that my my finger is more up on the blade. That is also okay because that same technique, that pinching technique here is still the same. And that also helps me with that. So I want to use the back of the knife here because I'm doing a chop and a slice. So that I'm originally chopping through it and slicing. And that's going to get me nice good pieces. And I'm using the knife. I'm not rush. I'm not rushing it. Never want to rush. Let the knife work for you. You want these pieces to be nice. Any fat pieces that you can excavate, do so. You don't want those there. You want this all to all this flavor to just be dancing, dancing in your mouth. And that's a beautiful, look at the color on that meat. That is what you want after a good marinade. The outside, you want it to be a little darker because it's been absorbing that juice and the different flavors that you blended together there. Make sure these are all good. And guess what? Only because that this meat has to be cooked at a higher temperature than our seafood, which is at 155 degrees because it is beef, we are able to use the same dredge. You like that? That's beautiful, isn't it? It's great. I know. But we're going to go right into it with it. Actually, you know what? We can sprinkle it. We can sprinkle it. That way, if we want to use this dredge later, we can for a, a, another seafood dish. And those are all options that you can do. So we're going to dredge it up. That's, gonna, that's coming out beautifully. And we're gonna let that sit for a moment. And to be honest, our breakfast is almost to its final finale, which is the plating, my favorite. It's gotta be your favorite. All right, that shrimp is ready. I'm gonna go in with my helpmate, that fork. That way I don't have to. And I wanna make sure my hands are completely dry. Oil and water does not mix, we've all heard it before. It is very, very true. Please, I don't want you to get hurt. I don't want to get hurt, so I'm going to take my time. I'm going in just with my hands. To be honest, the closer you get to your oil, the better. If I can get a small turn on that camera. If I'm going real close, I'm not going to burn myself. Because I'm not dropping it. And if that's a little uncomfortable for you at first, that's fine. We're going to go to our helpmate, we're going to scoop, and we're going to place. Scoop and place. With a small transition, when we're turning on the camera, from our fork to the pan. And that's how that goes. And we let those cook up nice. We got our steak going in right behind it. So we're going to get those moved over to the sides. That's looking good. And that's cooking nicely. Beautiful. That's beautiful. 
I'm gonna go back for my grits. Move the lid as I clean up, clean this up real quick. Just all of that. Nice grits on there. I have my spoon, my helpmate. And I'm going in first stir. Oh, that's good. Oh, yes. Yes, people. Yes, folks. This is going great. Yes, this is going good. This is what you want. Yes, yes, yes. And right here, this is the consistency you want your grits to have. This is what you want. This is how you want it. See those butters coming around the side? Add some more chunks in there. That's going to accumulate. That's going to happen. You just keep working that same technique. Small adjustment on the camera for you. And it's going to still come out great. I'm actually going to go crazy right now. And do that last tablespoon and a half of butter. And that's going to continue to thicken up nicely. This, din this breakfast actually takes it quite a little bit longer. And that's because we have the star of the show, the grits. And you want those to be perfect. You don't want them too watery. You don't want them too thick. You don't want them clumpy. And you want them, definitely, definitely, definitely want them fully cooked. And that way you can serve them to anybody. Now, we have that here. It's the start of that. On to our next. I told you I'm butter on this. I'm sorry. Maybe it's from my, because I'm born in the South and raised in the South. I'm not sure, but for me, butter is, I need butter grits. That's what I need. So, and it's gonna be great. We got that going. Let's make sure we clean up our area. Let's keep our hands going, mind focused. Let's try it up. Dry my hands up. I know you saw me put the knife down. I still place that blade outwards, always away from the body. Now we're gonna just do that quick rinse on that. I already washed it, that's air drying. And actually we can go right back into the shrimp because they're ready to be flipped. I'm gonna get a nice little camera turn for you. Look at that. Wait for it, wait for it. Let me get myself right. That's what you want. That's what you want, folks. Got a little guy in there. Oh yeah. They're turning. They're turning. Yes. 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 Remember, you gotta feel good. Got another cup man in there. Okay. Make sure they all get Cut it over. Simple as that. Don't make, don't leave anyone out. Because those are going in nicely, and I want all this to finish at the same time. Our grits are almost done. I'm actually going to take my steak and begin to lay them out on the counter. Make sure that they're completely covered in our dredge that we created, and those are going to actually cook up very nice little steak bites. And I think they'll complement our shrimp very well. Yeah, look at that, look at that nice strip there. And that's how you want it. You want it evenly coated all the way through your meat. Everything is coated. Everything is in there hugging each other nicely. It's on that protein nice and tight because when we drop it in that grease, it's gonna be just right. That's nice. That, look at that. That's how you look how that meat almost just falling apart like the softness of this butter in front of me. Falling apart in your hand because of that 16 hour marinade. And that, people. It's, what did it take us? Nothing but time. And we have it. If I can't find it, I'm going to use my helpmate, use that fork. Keep my hands as clean as possible right now because I see my shrimp getting ready to come out. So I see that this bowl is done, it's ready. I'm actually not gonna use this for shrimp or seafood again. I can only now use this dredge for chicken 
or more beef because it has to be done that way due to the laws of cooking and proper storage. So we're gonna put this away. And we're actually gonna get that shrimp out of there. That shrimp is done. That shrimp is so done and it's so gorgeous. We're gonna put it away in that keepsake and we're gonna be out of here. Let me get my help, other help made out. I have more than one. Here we are. And we're going right into it. Because you want timing. Look at that. Folks, I just want to share this with you. This is how you want it. That is a beautiful shrimp. You did great. And then if those who are unable right now, maybe you're at work. Maybe you're just listening to my voice and you're unable to watch. Thank you still for tuning in. Subscribe, please. Please, it'll help me. Leave comments how I can be better so we can be better. And that's going to be the message that we want to send to everybody tuned in. That we're all out there surviving together, cooking together, learning new experiences, and making great meals. Back. <laughs> These grits are looking good. All right. Boom. That's where we're going. Right into the protein. Because that oil is so ready. That oil is so ready. We're just placing those in there neatly. And we're taking our time. We're gonna get a nice little rinse on my hand. Quick dry. Dry my hands. Help me. Help me. These are gonna cook up so tenderly. It's gonna be have such a good crisp on the outside that you're gonna fall in love instantly. This is my last applying of butter, two tablespoons, and I'm out. Butter's out. Out of the picture. Back in the fridge you go, Mr. Butter. Okay. A little light clean up here. We can get rid of our paring knife. Let him dry. Freshen up these utensils here. Get a good wipe down. We want our area clean. And the very next step after these proteins will be our eggs. And no, not this time. We're not gonna do fluorotines. Egg fluorotine is for another tutorial. And they're so good. You're gonna enjoy that. Yes, as long as you want. You keep your area clean. It's always fresh for you. And it's always starting new. Look at that. That's beautiful. And it took no time at all. I can, I'm actually going to dry my hands because we're going right back over the oil. And I want to get you guys to see. There's a small turn on the camera. If you can possibly see, see how that's, see how that's working in. See how the blood is actually seeping out of the meat? That lets you know on the other side, it's cooking beautifully. Let me get my help made over here. And look, as I turn that piece over, watch this. That's what you want. That's cooking so nicely that it's almost hard to believe. But we did it. We did it. And we're going to let that go. We're going to let that go for a while. Okay, great. Now, we want to do our eggs. 
how we're going to do eggs. So many different ways. You have scrambled, we have fried, we have poached, sunny side up, al dente. You know, some people like it sunny side up or mid well or medium, so that gooey egg yolk drips all over their food. That's a preference. It all depends on how you like it. Now, I'm thinking this morning with what our grits, we're going to go ahead and garnish that when we finish with that with a light sprinkle of cheese. Then we're going to lay our shrimp and our steak on top. Those are going to be the highlights of the dish. They're going to be dancing up on top of there. And we're going to actually do fried eggs. I think that would be best. That fried egg, the texture, when you crack an egg into a pan directly, the outside of it, you want that to cook first. Then you break the yolk. With that, you're going to be have a great center cut, almost to say, fried egg. And with that, you're able to feel the texture of it with a helpmate to know how well you want it to be cooked. Okay? So let's give it a good turn on the steak here. They're cooking up great. Yeah, they're cooking up great. And they look beautiful. They look great. They have a great color on them. And this is what I meant by watching your eyes. Seeing how it's being cooked all the way through. And that's a small term for you. And that's really what we should, where we should be at. It has that nice, good, firm crust on it. When I touch that with my fork, it's not falling off or flaking off. These pieces on this side, we're just going to get them over a little bit more to the center. And that way they can get like their pan mates and crisp up this side. Okay, now, let's get the eggs. With our grits on the final round, they're actually almost done. Grits take a while, folks. And they can be deceiving. So we're actually gonna remove the lid, that way some of that heat it can escape. Discard that into our sink. And that way that's gonna get a good coat and they're gonna cook a little bit more rapidly for us so we all finish on time. And I'm actually just standing here stirring this because I'm just checking for those last little bit of clumps and lumps, bumps and screws, so we can uh, get those panned out, I mean, bumped out. Beat them up. That's how you want it. Now, if you want to thicken up your grits ever so slightly, you can. And that's what I'm going to do here. Because I like my grits is a little bit more thicker. So I'm actually going to use a little bit of flour and a little bit of baking powder. And we're going to do such a minuscule, such a tiny amount that it's almost, you're not even going to realize that you're going to put it in there. Okay? We're going to go with the smallest one that we have, which is our quarter of a cup. We're going to make sure that that's nice and dry in there. Because again, we're working with dry ingredients. And you want to make sure that everything you measure is actually working out for your benefit. We're going to get our other little small guy right here. Half a tablespoon. Is that what that is? Yes, it is. And we're going to start actually with the baking powder. Let me get this out of your way so you can see clearly. We're actually going to get the baking powder first. And we're going to go right in with that. One. Actually, let's start over. Let's do half of this. So just ever so little bit. One. Set that down. Put that to the side. And then to be honest, we're going to use the same half table for our flour. And we're going to use the side of the bag for that. Just to make that level. And with that, I'm just going to use this and I'm just going to mix it up gonna be good. And with that, 
Now, you don't want to add any water to it because you want it to go into your good smell. And to be honest, folks, that's going to thicken it up rapidly. And that's what I want. Beautiful. And that blended in together very well. Our steak is popping and talking to us. So they're actually ready and you can smell it. Let's get the wave. Yes. That's what we want. And they're gonna go into our keep safe. Yes, once proteins are cooked, they can all share the same plate. They're all cooked at a proper temperature. They're all gonna be held at the proper temperature. That's what you want, right? Oh, yes. Oh, man, that's good. That looks good. Let me get another helper here. We're going to go right into it. Get this out of here. Because those turned out beautiful. Look at that. Look at that piece of steak there, folks. That. That is what you want. When you stick into that, it takes nothing for it to go in onto your fork. Take your time. We're actually going to turn off the eye. Let that drain. And all those pieces are looking great. Yeah, a little piece that went over the top a little bit, a little smaller piece. That's all right. You can actually save that one to the side for a little snack. Make sure that actually a nice little taster. Make sure that your foods are actually coming out the way you want. And please, please, feel free as you cook not to go overboard. <laughs> so just feel free to taste as you go along. Definitely. I'll let you know how you're blending, how you're doing your blends, how you're doing your seasoning. Just put this protein away back in the keep safe. And we're actually going to just let that actually cool down some. And I'm just going to take my spoon here and do a small scrape while that's still hot. And that just removes so effortlessly. Still go back with the sifting. And because that's hot, we're just going to put that cool off as well. And because we're done with this in our frying process, pan, pan, pan frying, I'm actually going to discard this into a bowl, into a cup, excuse me, a bowl, so that that can cool. And that bowl is not going to uh, be hurt in, in any way. I'm going to do a quick wash on this because I'm going to need it for our eggs. And then breakfast will be served. And you'll be able to see that final product. Do a quick wipe and rinse. That Teflon pan is going to be your friend, especially when you go into your eggs and we do our eggs because you want a good, turn that eye back on. You want a good, a good non-stick pan. We're going to get a good wipe down on this. And so this is clean enough you can catch fire, anything. This stuff is actually cooled down to the point where you can scoop it right off the counter, right into your hand, then right into the stove. Beautiful. We're not going to waste any time with our eggs because their breakfast is actually ready to be served. And like I was saying, we're going to continue with the butter. It's going to be great. I have my helpmate back again. I'm gonna go ahead and pull out those eggs that we're gonna need for this meal. And it's gonna be great. Add a little butter in there. Get that pan ready for those eggs. Our birds are actually looking great. Get, get your little side view on that. 
what you want, folks. That's how you want it. As you can hear, that butter is actually starting to melt down. Get a little turn on the pan. Get comfortable, folks. This is your kitchen. And give this a nice turn. See how that thickened up? That's what we wanted. That's exactly how I wanted them. And that. Can't get better than that. Those eggs are going right into the pan. Crack. Crack. Next one. Pardon me. And the technique, again, we're going to go into the, go into the same technique of cracking the eggs just right in. And those are going to fry up nicely. The yolk broke on one of them, and that's okay. That's okay, because we're going to break them anyway. So that's already cooking up nicely. Got a good rinse. Go wipe down, get that raw egg off your counter. Unless you're Rocky, we don't eat raw eggs. Okay. It's not good for us. Let's get rid of this. And to be honest, we're right back at it. Gonna taste this. Mmm. 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 Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Now. Listen to me. Food and not it like it, it ignites me on the inside. I wanted to set a little fire inside of you all today and let you know that when you follow the techniques of any type of cooking program, any type of cookbook or tutorial or whatever the case may be, I want you to understand that the flavors you're creating is mind-blowing. and. That steak was great. The texture of it, how it how it melted over my mouth, the, the crispiness of the crust that we created with our dredge and putting it into the pan when the oil was ready. Not before so it doesn't absorb the oil and then you get a real thick like, almost eating grease, a coat of grease. That didn't happen. I had a nice great crunch. I had a great succulent flavor with the crunch. It blended right into the meat. The meat was succulent, it blended into the texture and the juices or the seasons that we had it marinating in. It was beautiful. Our eggs are turning out great. And see, this is what I was meaning by letting the outside, which is considered the whites of the eggs, let those cook first. You see that has that film over it, and that's fine. That's just that membrane that's actually healthy for you in some instances for you to be able to get that egg cooked just right now. Then we're going to pop that yolk And these two eggs are actually going to be mine because I'm the one who likes it a little bit more runny. And the solid ones are going to be for my husband because he likes his a little bit more fried. And that's okay. All right. You want that to get a good stir on that. When you shake your egg pan, you need another turn for you. You want your eggs to move around the pan like that. That lets you know that your pan is very well coated. Coat it with whatever type of cooking agent you use, whether it be oil or per butter. It's going to be good enough to move the eggs around. You don't want your eggs to stick. No one wants sticky eggs. And to be honest, we're going to let that just cook and cook and cook. And we're going to get our bowls ready because once the eggs are done, it's going to be time to plate, time to set, and time to eat. We have our bowls. Give them a good rinse on that. Yep. 
got a nice good rinse. Yes. I hear you. Your food's going to talk to you. Those popping noises. That's your food letting you know it's cooking. It's cooking and I need you to come look at me. I need you to come check me out. Make sure I'm going right. Doing right. All right. Yes. That's beautiful right there. You want to get a nice firm grip on your pan. And you want a moving motion like this. You don't see the eggs peeking up over the side. That's what you want. A better view on that. You're going to alternate hands. I'm lifting my pan and I'm giving it a nice shake. That's all you like. That's all you need. I'll let you know underneath. I'm cooking. Okay. Checking our grits here. Yes. Now, like I said, our grits are going to be garnished today. I prefer cheese. A lot of people do. Some don't, and that's okay too. Let's get a good firm dry on my hands here. And we're gonna go right in with the cheese, with the grits. Now, again, in your hand, over the food, any extra cheese is always good, see my grandma always says. And we're gonna just sprinkle that in nicely. For every handful that you do, larger handed people, one whole cup is your hand, smaller hands, is about a half a cup. We're gonna go with two cups of cheese, and that's a cup per cup of grit. We're gonna actually just put that right back in the fridge. Quick wash on my hands, turn off the eye for my grits, because they're done. I'm gonna let that cheese melt and blend it in. These eggs are looking gorgeous. That pan is so, so very well. Very well oiled, very well lubricated. Gonna turn on the camera for you. That's what you want. That's beautiful right there. Okay. We have our bowls here. Butter out of the way. Small adjustment for you. You can see clearly. I'm actually gonna. That's beautiful. That right there is what you want, folks. We'll do a tutorial on the flip. But it was the same technique. Because the whole piece is round, I just used the side of the pan, got a good stir on it, a good spin, and I just a light down and up, and it's gonna come out. And that's how the top of your bottom of your eggs should look. And you're actually going to serve these this side up because that's your presentation side. Those cheese eggs, one more spin on the camera for you. Those cheese grits are actually melting down very well. And that's what you want, that bubbling effect. Looks like lava. My cheese lovers, don't fall out of your seats just yet. Yes, you hear those last minute taps against the side of the pan, pop, excuse me. That's just ensuring that my grits are cooked all the way through and blended all the way through. And that that's gonna be a good, a good meal, a good taste, a good flavor, a good blend. Now we're gonna go right into serving. I'm gonna get a solid spoon here. If you notice, it doesn't have the holes in it like we were using earlier. And that's for a good reason. Ladles are good too for this, folks. And we're just gonna scoop that up and right into the bowl. And that's coming out great. And you wanna fill the bottom of your bowl or to your preference of whomever you're serving. I'm gonna repeat the process. All depends on how much, you know. You, 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 you be the judge. You know who you're serving. You know which family member eats what, which friend likes, and how much they like. And then you can always just simply ask. You get a little hiccup on the side, that's okay too. You get a nice little uh, helping agent and scoop that inside the bowl, off the side, and your family will be just fine with that. 
Those eggs look good. I'm actually gonna do another little soft turn with a flip, and my eggs are done. I'm gonna turn that off. I'm going in with the protein next. My hands are clean, so I'm gonna go right with them. My shrimp, I'm just gonna sprinkle along the bridges. It's gonna go right along the inside of it. And that's gonna be pretty. That's gonna be really nice. You wanna take your time, you, you want it to look. You eat with your eyes first, folks. Some people have their own description of it. Many people have told me. Then they go to smell. It smells great. Everybody I know that and, and don't know. I'm quite sure you smell your food. You make sure that it's what you like. How you want it to smell. That steak, we're just actually going to poke down into our grit. And actually let some of those good pieces stand up. Along to their, along to their, along with their integrity of the meat, and that's gonna look pretty. That looks pretty right there. We're just gonna stand that up like that. Get all those good pieces in there, and yep, you served it right. That bacon we're gonna save for last. We're gonna go right in after that with our eggs. I'm just gonna cut this down the down the middle, down the middle one way. And then both semicircles, yet again, into quarters. If you're uncomfortable holding the pan, we can place it on our countertop. If safe to do so, folks, only if safe to do so. If you must, you can remove your eggs and put them onto a, a, a plate. From there, we're going to just spoon that in just like that, off to the side. You still want to be able to expose your grits because that's the showcase. That's the platform. Let's discard that. And we're gonna go right in with the bacon and we're just gonna sprinkle that over the eggs. And folks, thank you for joining me. Thank you for logging in. Please subscribe. Please tell your family, your friends, share the link. And I appreciate you. And we'll see you back here again. And if I can get a small adjustment on that camera for you. Sorry about that. Give me a second. Turn that camera around for you. And that, folks, is homemade grits. Shrimp and grits. Steak. Eggs. Looks great. You did great. Thanks for joining. See you next time.